Eric Koch was born in Elberfeld, a large city of the German Empire located in the Rhineland, in the summer of 1896, in the family where the child grew up and was brought up, there were four children. Father Gustav Adolf Koch worked at a coffee factory. Mother Henrietta Mathis was engaged in housekeeping and raising the younger generation. Religion occupied a large place in the life of parents. Being followers of Lutheranism, a man and a woman kept their sons and daughters in strictness. As a child, Eric entered elementary school and then went to high school. Adults did not have enough money to get higher education, so instead of the university, the young man attended classes at a trade school that supplied personnel for the local printing house Dietz & Co. It was there that Coke began his career at the age of 15. In 1914, a native of Elberfeld became a railroad worker. Starting from the bottom, he rose to the rank of switchman and telegraph operator, further career did not develop. Because Eric went into the army, his military biography began in World War I in an active infantry regiment. On the fronts, Koch did not win awards and regalia, and upon returning to Elberfeld, he began to move in a different direction. At the job left before the war, he took the place of an assistant in management. He also joined the volunteer corps led by Gerhard Rosbach. In 1922, when the ideas of National Socialism began to gain popularity in Germany, Eric joined the radical far-right and SDAP party and realized that this was a calling. In a short period of time, in the status of a Goliter, he headed the department in Ruhrstadt and became the treasurer of the organization throughout the region. Subsequently, for active participation in the anti-French movement, Koch was arrested and deprived of membership in the party, but managed to recover by the end of the 1920s. During this period, according to contemporaries, a landmark meeting between Erich Koch and Adolf Hitler took place. The authors of the memoirs, illustrated with photographs, wrote that the acquaintance gave rise to an inferiority complex. As a result, the party leader, who had an average appearance, began to imitate the ideological leader of the Nazis and grew a moustache in the future. Devotion to the NSDAP and the Führer ensured rapid promotion. Koch served as Gauleiter of East Prussia and was a member and head of the Landtag faction, the highest constitutional body of the province. Erich is also known as the founder of the newspaper Bruish Zeitung a member of the Reichstag and the chief president of the province, the center of which was Königsberg, now the Russian city of Kaliningrad. In the first months of the Great Patriotic War, Koch was appointed head of the civil administration of the Polish region of Bielystok, captured by the Nazis. When Adolf Hitler occupied a number of lands east of Germany and initiated the creation of the Imperial Ministry of the Occupied Territories, the party leader received the post of Reichskommissar of Ukraine. These posts, which allowed him to be as close as possible to the top leadership of the Third Reich, the native of Elberfeld also appreciated the coast. The leadership noted the merits of a tough and rude representative of the authorities, who had the widest range of powers. During the years of government in the occupied lands of the Soviet Republic, Natural resources were destroyed and architectural monuments were destroyed. For a tyrant currying favor with Hitler, there were no differences between people of different ages, genders and nationalities. About four million people died in the enslaved Ukrainian SSR. Keeping order in the entrusted territory, the so-called Archduke Eric welcomed the enmity between the oppressed Slavic peoples. The lives of others were of no value to him. Koch openly spoke with disdain about Ukrainians, Poles and Jews. Hating non-Aryans, he sought to kindle internal conflicts and thereby exterminate as many people as possible, shrew. The dream of Koch and other fascists about a prosperous existence in a state built on the ideology of Nazism collapsed under the onslaught of the Red Army. When Soviet soldiers 
armed officers appeared on the occupied lands. The Fura's ally tried to evacuate the civilian population. But in the early spring of 1945, he realized the hopelessness of the situation and fled. Unlike most colleagues in the Third Reich, Koch managed to avoid immediate punishment for war crimes. After escaping from East Prussia, the Nazi changed his appearance through plastic surgery and, under the pseudonym Rolf Berger, settled in the small German village of Hassan Moor. For four years, a member of the NSDAP managed to hide under the guise of an agricultural worker who fed from his own plot and received social benefits. However, over time, nature manifested itself, and Eric revealed himself at a meeting of refugees from different countries and regions. The tone of the speech turned out to be familiar to some of those present. So the German was handed over to the British authorities. After that, the Reichskommissar of Ukraine was handed over to the extradition tribunal by decision of this authority and the government of the USSR. Koch was sent to a Polish prison for a subsequent trial for war crimes. The process that attracted public attention took place in the late 1950s. There is little information about Koch's personal life in open sources. From archival materials it follows that he existed in solitude and had neither a wife nor children. In the spring of 1959, Koch learned that he had been sentenced to death due to health problems. The German received a deferment and lived in a Warsaw penitentiary for more than 25 years. After dying of natural causes in old age, at the age of 90, Arik was buried in an unmarked grave. This happened on the territory of the Polish prison Barczewo in 1986.